And so on our float needle here, we've already inspected it. There's a couple things about this float that I want to point out before you guys we put it together. On this float, all of these, this should spring, okay? This should have that function. If that's sticking or notching or anything, you've got a problem, it needs to be replaced. What this does, it creates a little shock absorber for, I'm going to go ahead and assemble this on here now. It will, we'll look at our float here. With this Harley design here, it's plastic, it's one piece. I can't bend it or twist it. These lasted a really long time. Obviously, they didn't rot out. They didn't have any of the problems of getting holes in there from being soldered together. You have to look at some of our other videos for tips on that. Um, but what we do have is we still have an adjustable float. See the metal tab in there? Yep. You can see here, I'm going to ruin this and readjust it, and we'll make a video just on float height uh, here in a second. But what happens is we take it, we put this little clip around here so the float just sits on there. And watch this. Do you see that where it pushes in and out there? Yep. Now let me put it on the bike. And, and let's keep in mind here, before we, uh, before we get ahead of ourselves here, on disassembly we talked about this arrow, okay, and that was the direction that it gets removed. That means that this diameter on this side as compared to this side are different sizes. Does that make sense? So this one here closest to the arrow is actually smaller in diameter <clears throat> than this side. So the pin, you'll notice, will go right in here. Do you see that? Yep. And then on this one, it will not. It's going to be pressure fit in there so that it will uh, will not be able to fall out. Harley's the only one I know that did this. We get technicians that are you know not aware of this or in a hurry, and they if they try to punch this in or out from the wrong side, they're going to break the ear off. Okay. But what I've gotten the habit of doing after being here, just to doing quite a few Harley carburetors, is I just go ahead and I do a little test fit. This allows me too to see if the if the, the bosses themselves are wore out, if they're egg-shaped, is that ever going to be able to shut my fuel off? No, no it's not going to work very well. So another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get it wet. And this is something that I think people overlook. There's a chance that that could just stick open for a little bit and just spill a little fuel. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, take my pin here. Now, since I want to show a couple things, I'm not going to fully insert the pin I'm just going to get it set in there like that for now. A couple different things here. First off, a lot of people might not be aware in your carburetors here, this little plastic tab that's right here. Okay, that limits the travel of the float to build open. And why that's important is we wouldn't want this to open so far that the float needle could actually jam or stick and then not be able to shut back off when we need it to. I'm going to go ahead here and flip this carburetor over in a position so that you can actually see how it would work on the motorcycle. So what we have here is as that, as that fuel enters into the bottom of the carburetor, this is going to float up and then effectively shut the fuel off and put it at the level that we desire, which is specified in the service manual. If our float level in the, you know, in the set position is like this, this would be a lean mixture, meaning that we would not have enough fuel available. If I bend that metal tab and this sits like this, it's not going to have enough fuel ready and available. Now, the bike will probably idle fine, but if you go to give it any throttle and get after it, the bowl will empty a fuel so fast it can't replenish it, and then you'd have a big stumble. Make sense? Now, let's go the other extreme. Let's say we're way up here. Now, for up here, we're going to be rich. That means too much fuel is going to be available, and we're going to end up having raw fuel be able to leak out of that emulsion tube and go down into the engine that's undesired creating a rich mixture. So we've got a, a measurement and a procedure to follow through and that's what I'll demonstrate now. All right, continuing on here, this is where we get into a lot of trouble is that when you look at the service manual, it at first appearance, especially a lot of metric manuals, what we're, what we're trying to do is we're trying to adjust this. Do you get that? We're trying to adjust this measurement here. So right now we got to remember we're working upside down. That would be an extremely rich condition. Almost all carburetors, when this is set correctly, this will be 90 degrees or parallel with the carburetor body. Okay, there's that plastic seam yep. and then the body of the carburetor here, how they're, how they're equal to each other. Mm -hmm. So this is obviously too low and this is too high. So our goal is to end up somewhere along here, but the problem is that does not mean in this position. 
Okay, how this is actually adjusted, you're supposed to just get it where that dampener and the float valve, remember that I showed you earlier? Watch this, do you see how that bounces? Yeah. Yep. Okay, watch what happens when I just let the full weight of the float go down. Do you see how it sinks down? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it looks like it's way out of whack. If I adjust the float here, I'm going to be off. There's absolutely no doubt about it. So we're going to go ahead and do it right, and we're going to do it wrong. I'm going to just see how it was to begin with. So let's zoom back in here. When I just get that to... Was it pretty good? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it looks pretty good. But we're going to take it a step further. All right, we've gotten a little creative, and we're going to uh, copy the factory procedure here. But here's a picture right out of the service manual that shows that we should set it at 15 to 20 degrees. Look in the top right corner there. They also show the, the dampener uh, internals of that float valve. And let me go ahead and demonstrate how to do this using some creative uh, tools with an uh, angle gauge. All right, per the manual, we're going to try, and you realize we're at zero here. And the manual tells us to get to... 15 to 20 degrees without touching it with the angle gauge here. If I go beyond 20, do you see where it's starting to, to depress too much on the float? Yep. yep. Okay, so around here is where we want to be so that we can adjust this float height correct. All right, guys, we're just going to be creative. I know you guys out in the shop would never do this. So when you set float height, you've got this figured out where it just hits the pin, it just starts to depress and you don't have to worry about too much. But as you can see in the picture I just showed you right out of the factory Harley-Davidson service manual, they tell us what degrees to actually tip that carburetor so that we can actually set this at a, at a pretty precise position so that it can be repeatable over and over. So just having some fun in the lab here. We've got a, a angle gauge here that we're gonna use and then we're just using some shim stock that you guys have seen from construction industry for uh, shimming doors and windows. All right, so let's go ahead here. You can see this looks like a pretty crazy pile here of wood shims, but we've experimented with this. And now with the advantage is, instead of us having to go back and forth and back and forth and just getting that to seat, I could go ahead and set it right to where Harley-Davidson specifies in the manual. And it, it's not going to matter where I go on this, but then I take here and use my angle gauge, and you can see that we end up at what? 17, 18, something like that? Yeah. Let's go all the way to the top, see what happens here. Doesn't change, right? We're just on that ramp. So this is kind of a cool way that we can now go in and use the spec on the Harley-Davidson service manual to determine if this float height is uh, rich or lean or what we have going on. So we got two different ways that we could do that. My uh, The old school way that we see a lot through a lot of carburetor tools is this little guy right here is I could go ahead and there's a scale on here and you'll see here that this is actually in millimeters because that's real common that we use in the motorcycle uh, in the power sports industry that's what this tool is from so I could go here and per my service manual I just went ahead and looked it up I've got uh, 10 and a half to 11.51 millimeters and then I also have it in thousands okay but real quickly if I just go in here and I go to 10 okay and I go right between 10 and 11, I'm going to be within spec, aren't I? Yep. So now look at what I get to do real quickly. I could take and I'm going to preset this tool up on the base here. That's what these two legs are. Okay. I'm going to go back to my little stack. And now that this tool is set up, what I could do is see if my float height is actually set correctly. And do you see how I'm actually depressing the valve? Mm -hmm. Yep. So my float height's not correct. I'm brass floats, if you will, can be uh, can be all bent and twisted up. And so you actually have to check both. If I have a float that's like this, whatever the lower one is is going to shut the fuel off sooner. Okay. On this one, it's plastic in one piece. I wouldn't be real concerned about. It. But if you're using this on those brass floats or anything else, you want to flip it around and check both individual floats. So let's get back to this guy. Okay, so now we've determined that we've got a problem, so we got to think, well, how can we adjust this? Another thing that I like to use is a veneer caliper before I move on on how to adjust it. So we go ahead here, our veneer caliper. I could go ahead and make it metric. Check this out. If I just switch this over real quick, 448 thou. 
Okay, 453 would be the max. So either one of those are good. Now I can just go ahead and lock this down just with a little bit of light pressure and watch what I could do with our veneer caliper because we already have this tool so it's nice and handy. I can take it here and I could just go across that edge and check and see how we are. Okay. Now do you notice how it's not pushing it down? Mm -hmm. Yep. What's that telling you? That your other tool could be off. My other tool was not near as accurate, was it? Maybe I wasn't sitting square. This tool here is really perfection, the fact to say that there's no question about it that we are good right here. Okay, this, uh, if, if anything here, this is even set up a hair rich. Do you see how there's a just a hairline of a gap right there? Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's, it's actually set up. Let me square this up because this is on the big end of the scale. I'm, a scale. I'm actually a hair rich. It looks like a mile on the camera here. I'm going to go ahead and just set it to here. Make sense? Back up the camera here. Do you notice how the, get a little closer. Do you notice how the plastic line and the float bowl are not parallel right now? Yep. That's common for lean mixtures, for lean factory mixtures, okay? Now you notice here when it's level, it's a little bit richer, we said. So that probably means that some technician's been in here and just went ahead and set it level. The majority of bikes, I've never had any issues by setting it level, but it's always best just to use a spec. Now, listen to me on this. So let's get the camera here on the, on the float needle itself. Do not, by any means, take... And what we need to do is we want to bend this tab... Do not do this with it assembled. That's going to put a lot of force and pressure on the float needle and you could damage it. Your best bet would simply be to pull it out, get like this, get in here and either bend it up or push it down and then do what you want to do with it. Okay? I'm going to go ahead and while it's apart here, I'm going to violate it. I'm going to go ahead and push this down. Sometimes you're going to do this, you're going to go, oh, I went the wrong way. So look what happened. I went way the wrong way, didn't I? Yep. Now watch this. Do you see how that how that bounces on that dampener? Mm -hmm. Watch what happens when I put it straight here. Look at that. Doesn't it actually look? Now if I were to check it wrong and check it on the bench flat like this, do you look how it even looks a little rich right now? Yep. Mm -hmm. But in, in actual reality, in the actual correct procedure, it is grossly lean. Set it here. Instead of that 15 to 20 degree angle, this is, this is a perfect example how you can go wrong. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to go exactly the other way now. Do it wrong on the bench. You can see it's grossly. Do you see how there's no bottoming either? Mm -hmm. we're not even, we can't even make the dampener work because we're adjusted so far. But let's go ahead and uh, set it up on our little jig here. The dampener's working, so we have the ability to check it. But then if we go here... We could see that we're we got a, a significant gap in there, mm -hmm. so we need to be able to bring that gap back to here. Okay, so now I'm going to actually just set it correctly. Here's an important uh, point of visualizing things. So even though this is a, a good little jig here, I know that I want that line just just slightly off of being perfectly parallel, right? This is how you get faster about things. If I take it out, put it in, take it out, put it in, take it out, I'm going to be here all day long. So what you're going to see me do here is actually not remove it because after years of doing this and getting confident, I know to hold the float up, supporting it fully so that the needle is not getting mashed into the seat and I can make quick adjustments. I think that's the money right there. Now we're going to find out. But that's just a guess at this point, isn't it? Yep. yep. So now if I go here... Okay, I'm a little bit lean, aren't I? Mm -hmm. Okay, so then I'll just split the difference. <clears throat> and I'm talking just barely. How you like that? Woo, looks good. Okay, and then I check my other side just to have verification. Life is good, and now I can go ahead and punch my pin all the way in. Need to be really careful. I've talked about this, that we have you know, little artisan hammers here. This is something from Menards. I'm going to go ahead and support my thumb on the other side here. I'm going to lightly tap that nice and even. Now, notice I'm definitely hitting down here, not up here. 
see, I don't want to break that ear off, okay? So I was really being intentional at what I was doing. Now, when the float bowl's on, can you see the cradle in here? That pin just has to sit in between those. So before I move any further forward, I'm gonna go ahead and just give it a quick little test fit to verify that the bowl will actually slide on. If your pin isn't on far enough, this might drag and catch, and then you'd know, hey, I got a little bit more work to do. That is how you set float height.